Hello, lovely podcast people. Uh, welcome to another episode of Not Another Nutrition Podcast. A purposefully oh, provocative, is that the right word? Provocative episode title. Uh, something like, again, these don't get decided until I've after, after I've recorded these, but something like how carbohydrates literally can't make you fat. Uh, and this has come uh, about because I had a message from someone who is somewhat knowledgeable and had heard me speak on another podcast about this. I think it was Steve Hall's podcast, Revive Stronger. And I might actually ask Steve if I can have the audio and release it on my podcast because it was a good one. I'll have to go find it. Uh, <clears throat> but I've spoken about this before, of how carbohydrates don't really get turned to fat. And it's a bit of a myth. And so often we hear phrases like, if you eat too many carbs before bed, you won't burn them off and they'll get stored as fat, for instance. You know, and you know, carbs are making people fat and high carb diets make people fat. Don't you know, carbs release insulin and just, just pseudoscience or what what's the is it quasi science um i won't i won't ask alexa on this occasion i've had a few complaints to management um excuse me i'd like to make a complaint about martin mcdonald he keeps saying alexa and it sets off my alexa and i just don't like it <laughs> please tell him to stop um, so get go outside Put some earphones in your ear and do some steps and then you won't be near your Alexa. Oh, she didn't hear me. Oh, she did hear me. Shh, always listening. Uh, where was I? Quasi science. Uh, you know, this this kind of little bit of a knowledge is a dangerous thing. So this person is, you know, you know knows a bit, but they said... You know, I told them to go away and do some reading, said it's so complicated, I just can't get my head around it. And so one of the compliments I get on this podcast, about this podcast, is that I explain difficult things well. Now, de novo libogenesis is not easy to, to explain well, because it's a complex process. It's very quickly, it's de novo, is the creation of new fat but from something that wasn't fat before. So in this instance, creating fat from carbohydrates. So this idea that you eat carbohydrate and then you turn it into fat and then you store it. And the fact is, is that is a very, very energy expensive process and a difficult process for the body to do. And therefore it does other stuff instead of that. And now let me simply point out at the beginning, this, is right cover any children's ears i mean it's not that bad it's a it's a scientific term kind of but mental masturbation it's an ivory tower discussion it's a discussion that doesn't really need to happen but unfortunately uh because of people making stuff up it, it therefore has has to happen a bit more. Like we should really be leaving this discussion to scientists. Now, I did actually come up with the world's most amazing analogy for this and why carbohydrates aren't being stored as fat. So you're welcome. And here it is. Well, no, let me just talk a little bit more. So there's also this. So it, the, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it first. When you eat, you know, inverted commas, uh, you know, quote unquote, too many carbohydrates. The fact is, is they, the only way we're really defining too many is really is if it puts us in a calorie excess. If you do not go into a calorie excess, you're not gaining fat. You need the energy to come from somewhere to be made. Otherwise, you're creating new energy. And I'm pretty sure that's against the laws of physics. So we need to have energy. You can't store, or cr you can't, sorry, you can't create new energy or destroy energy. It's there. You know, it, you can change its form. And so in this biological 
um, organism that we are, a human, when we eat, and we generally eat a mix, this is the other thing, we, we eat a mix of protein, carbohydrate, fat, you know, for all intended purposes, alcohol, great. We, it, it's so almost impossible to find a diet that, and, and I said this to this individual, you need to think about real life situations to realize how dumb this is. Because, you know, you can't just go, I'm eating carbohydrate, I'm eating oats. Because oats contain protein and fat as well. And like the amount of fat in oats to put you into a calorie excess is a lot of, you know, the amount of oats you need to get into a calorie excess if there's a lot of oats, which then means you're eating some fat. Um, so, you know, you can eat thousands of extra calories in a sh in the short term in a in a sort of low fat diet and excess carbohydrate diet and we also can expand our pool of storage of carbohydrate in the body carbo loading like most of you will have heard of c carbo loading you know, for running a marathon, eat loads of carbs and it increases your glycogen, which is your carbohydrate, in your muscle. Now, we get to this point and these studies have been done. Like, we know this really through and through that you can eat, overeat, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of grams of carbohydrate, thousands of calories from carbohydrate over a period of a few days. And what happens is we tend to just two things happen. You increase your storage slightly and you burn off more carbohydrate. And what happens is, is you store all of the fat that you're eating. And this is really the crux of what I'm going to explain to you is when you eat lots and lots of carbohydrate, you're one in a calorie excess. So you never need to tap into or not really tap into your stores of energy inside your body which is your fat your adipose tissue or obviously your carbohydrate or protein from glycogen or muscle for instance so but when you eat loads and loads of calories you don't tap into your storage but you also store the exogenous outside of the body fat that you're eating whether that's from oats or whether that's from you, you know uh things that you would deem fats like butter or, or you know foods that you'd call high fat foods like nuts or, or whatever um some there are these other sources of fat that are hidden just in eating a healthy balanced diet you know you don't have to be adding lots of oil or you know solid fats to your diet without t to have fat in your diet so if you eat any fat that fat is going to be stored as fat because that's super easy for the body to do now when you eat more carbohydrate, and this is um, this is what uh, the, an analogy I thought of, and I was going to do it on camera, but I know most of you don't watch. So if you imagine a cup, a cylinder, whatever, and um, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to do the do the uh, hand actions for those of you who do watch and maybe I'll maybe I'll put this bit on Instagram. So. Eating in a calorie excess, we know we're going to store some energy. So if you have a cylinder, and this is you, your body, which also um, signifies your calorie needs, right? And then actually in my head that I was going to do it, I was going to poke a hole in the side, but you actually don't need to do that. If, if your energy needs are the size of this cylinder, and then I was going <coughs> to pour water in, and then pour some oil in, and obviously, because they have different de densities, they separate. So then the fat, the oil would sit on top. Now, if I get that right to the top, that is energy balance. And we're burning all of the carbohydrate. I'd probably need to like, put some sand in there. So that's like the bottom, the protein, and then the carbohydrate, and then the fat. Goodness me, this would have been so good, wouldn't it? Um, and then from there... If I then pour in more water, which is signifying our carbohydrate, what will happen is the carbohydrate section will expand and push our oil that's sitting on the top, and that will cause that to spill over. That spilling over there is us in an energy excess, and the fat, so what falls out, and I was going to put a tray in, you know, this is what our fat gain. So, you know, 10 grams of that come out. Okay, that's going to get stored as fat. 20 grams, that's going to get 30 grams. That's, you know, 80 grams, that's going to get. And then if we fill that up enough with carbohydrate, we're just burning carbohydrate and we've pushed all of the fat out and that's all going to be stored.
Now, this is what I said about it being a discussion that's, you know, ivory tower, mental masturbation. We don't need to discuss this because what's being stored doesn't really matter. The factor in energy excess, calorie excess, is what we all know. You know, the calorie deniers, fine. They're idiots. We all know that. We're in a calorie excess. We've stored that much fat. Which of those is being stored is the discussion that doesn't really need to happen, but has to happen because of people who are saying carbohydrates are really bad. If you eat too many carbs before bed, they don't get burned off and you store them as fat, etc., etc. all those myths. Now, at, at some point, you can eat enough carbohydrate that you've pushed all of the fat over the edge and then and but this becomes hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of grams of carbohydrate and as i said you you can expand your storage so this spilling over can go into different compartments it can spill over and we can increase our adipose tissue stores fat stores but it can also energy can spill over and be stored in our muscles as uh, you know one there's intramuscular triglycerides but we don't really think about those too much which does happen from a slightly higher fat diet you do get more stores of fat in your muscle but also we could store more carbohydrate in the muscle now one thing i will just say at this point is you also have um, metabolic flexibility if you are only burning carbohydrate all day long that could be an issue in certain situations um, which is why we don't want to be eating in a calorie excess all the time and um never having periods where we actually you know blood glucose goes down carbohydrate comes um, uh, insulin comes down and we and fat oxidation goes up for instance uh, but fortunately people tend not to be eating too much in their sleep so we do get those that natural period during our sleep as well right so when we eat so many carbohydrates and then our carbohydrates the water starts to spill out of this tube that is when we start to see de novo lipogenesis possibly occurring. Now, this has been studied, and it's very, very fancy techniques. Um, radioactive isotopes, deuterium oxide, I think is one that they commonly use. And we are able to measure the incorporation of, so they'll overfeed with like sucrose, like table sugar, sh like give or take 50 50 glucose and fructose or ju or just fructose or just glucose for instance and then we see the incorporation of those um different sugars that i've mentioned there into fat and it goes through this process of de novo lipogenesis to create fat now they've done this and and i'm pretty sure you know, studies use like 50 percent excess calories from you know coming from glucose fructose sucrose whatever and essentially the conclusions of these studies are like yes it can happen and and these this tested in obese individuals and lean individuals um and interestingly in obese individuals um or, or i say obese in situations of, of, of insulin resistance really is what we're discussing. So like type 2 diabetes is another one, which obesity doesn't necessarily, you know, doesn't go exactly hand in hand, directly proportional sort of thing. De novo lipogenesis in adipose tissue is actually reduced, uh, which I remember the first, I did a post on that, you know, maybe 10 years ago. I remember when I, I first kind of read about it, and I was like, wow, that's really, I'm surprised. You'd kind of think, oh, someone who's, who's become obese maybe it's happening more and that's part of an issue no it's not and and it, you know excess glucose insulin resistance um there's certain tran what's called transcription factors and these are things that code um for uh, uh gene production uh, or creation and um which then it, work as part of the process of de novo lipogenesis and that there's some fancy sounding transcription factor treb carbohydrate tr carbohydrate tr r responsive element binding protein something or other anyway um this is why i should make notes so i could pretend to sound to pretend to be cleverer than i am um but anyway, some, it's something like that. But it's down-regulated in adipose tissue when we have too much glucose. And the, but the thing I want to say is, 
And, and what's one of the points I want to make here, two points really, around it, it can upregulate the transcription factors in the liver. And then we get the production of fatty acids in the liver uh, and triglycerides in the liver. And that can be and is related to maybe, um, not maybe, I think the evidence is fairly strong in this area. I'm not an expert, I'm not an alcoholic fatty liver disease, but this upregulation of the um, binding protein in the liver leading to fat deposition, ectopic fat deposition, f you know, fat around the organs, this visceral fat that we know is not great, and leading to some of the elements of metabolic syndrome, which then just the whole system, it's a vicious cycle, the whole system, it, it's exacerbated this process of, well, then we've got insulin resistance, then we've got dyslipidemia. And it, interestingly, you can, you can do these super, super high fructose diets. This is the second point I want to make. A super high fructose intake, which again, people go, don't eat fruit, rubbish. Don't drink, you know, high fructose drinks all day long. You know, your, your soft drinks, your sugar sweetened beverages all day long um, is probably not a good idea. And the, the amount that you'd be drinking, again, we don't need to focus on fructose. We need to focus on healthy messages. Don't drink sugar sweetened beverages ever. They're just not good. Um, someone's drinking four liters, you know, a day. You don't need to worry about the fructose intake. You just need to go, we probably need to address that. That doesn't sound like the, an overly healthy thing to be doing. But anyway, loads of fructose. Uh, again, it's absorbed by what's called your hepatic portal vein. It's arriving in abundance in your liver and is creating, you know, is being used in de novo lipogenesis. It's it's a uh, yeah, e slightly easier process than, say, with glucose. But... Again, in lean and obese individuals, there's not there's not much of a difference. We just probably shouldn't be. Again, what's the pragmatic, the real life scenario here? Healthy messages saw all of this. L learning to eat a good diet, learning to eat a uh, satiating diet, a balanced diet. It sorts all of these problems out, which is why these are ivory tower discussions. But it's nice sometimes just to have this understanding, and also it helps us discredit the poor zealot-like extremist misinformation that does disempower people. Right, so what was I talking about? Uh, you know, we see this, you know, when, it, when the water comes out of the top of the tube, we do create some fat from carbohydrates. But even in these studies where they lose using like 50%, and I'll, I'll obviously link to many studies that, that I've did, I haven't mentioned many, I'll, two or three studies that discuss this, uh, that show this for any geeks, but Literally, the 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 production of like VLDL in the in these situations of fifty percent overfeeding is like ten grams of extra fat creation from carbohydrate per day in using these radioactive isotope measurements. Um, so it, you know the conclusion is like you know we conclude that it does not really significantly contribute to fat balance, whereas. The amount of fat that these people are sort of naturally consuming, um, you know, through eating a balanced diet and through, uh, you know, I, th I think one of them was like 96 hours of overfeeding. And it was like, okay, they gained 275 or whatever grams of fat. But only 10 grams of that was coming from carbohydrate. But what does it matter? They overate and that's the issue. It doesn't matter where it came from. It doesn't matter that carbohydrates aren't causing it. Yeah, but hopefully for that person and for everyone else who's ever wondered about this, it just gives you um, some background, some ammunition to have these discussions with people misleading people. And uh, you've, you've been witness to my amazing analogy <laughs> and hopefully learned something. Um, anything else on this? No, probably not. Mac Nutrition Live, 27th of November. I say this really quick because I'm like, ah, they're going to they're gonna stop the podcast now because all the good information's gone. But seriously... 27th of November, be there. Anyone and everyone welcome. Come to the after party. £15, after party only ticket. Boom. Come and hang out. Chat about de novo lipogenesis over a shot of Sambuca. Uh, we can discuss <laughs> alcoholic fatty liver disease. Uh, no, I'm joking. Well, I'm, I'm not really. But anyway, uh, but as podcast listeners, as people who obviously follow, the, follow my work, 
be cool to see there amazing topics being discussed there's there's one speaking slot that's actually currently free and i'm tempted to take it myself uh i don't i don't my thing is i always want to talk on stuff that people really want to hear about and i feel like i've spoken on so much stuff like what do people want to hear about more you know the most common questions i get are around rapid fat loss protocols how to set that up how to use it an update on the science around that but i just i don't like to be samey uh but who knows the other three speakers uh, that are already confirmed in speaking will be epic, good topics around intuitive eating uh, and intentional weight loss. Hilarious. The amount of gimps who have come out of the woodwork when they've seen me talking about this, like, uh, I'm not even going to go into it. Anyway, uh, body image and, you know, working towards good body image in yourself and your cl and clients, depending on who you are. It's so practical. Like, please get involved. Um, and then one on binge eating, which pff, who who couldn't do with an update on some practical strategies around binge eating. Right, I hope you've enjoyed that. Until next time, much love.